Shalom Aleichem, welcome. Let's go deep a little bit into the intellect part of the soul. We explained that the soul has an intellect part, intellectual part, and an emotional part. How do we know this? Because the scriptures say, the Torah says, that God created man to his image. Now, I already explained that this doesn't mean that God has an image, like a physical image. Rather, this explains, this means that we were created just as he expresses himself in specific ways, intellectual ways and emotional ways, we were created just like that. Why? One of the reasons is because through understanding ourselves, through dwelling and deepening in our meaning, our way we understand things, the way we feel things, etc., we can have a small grasp, understand a little bit at least, of how he works, so to speak, how he expresses himself. So just to say it in a different order, in a different way, but the same idea, God expresses himself. He decided, for whatever reason, we don't know, he decided to express himself in 10 specific ways. Three of those ways are intellectual ways. Seven of those ways are emotional ways. Because, again, we don't know why he decided he could have expressed himself, expressed himself in infinite ways. But he decided to take 10 ways. And with those 10 expressions, he decided to create man. Now, man resembles those 10 expressions, physically speaking, and also spiritually speaking, in the soul. So the soul has 10 powers, so to speak, three of them intellectual, and seven of them emotional. Let's dwell a little bit, let's deepen a little bit in the intellectual part. Our sages say, I'm going, to, I'm going to say three words in Hebrew, and I'm going to translate Chochmah, Bina, and Das, those three, whatever they are, those three things, are the three intellectual powers that are within the soul. Chochmah means wisdom. That's the regular translation people use, wisdom. Bina means understanding. Again, regular translation, that doesn't mean anything, actually. I'm going to explain, hopefully. And Das means, like, connection, knowing, but it means connection. What's Chochmah? Chochmah is like, again, wisdom is like the first spark of an idea. It's just when you say, I have an idea, I understand it, I, it's in the top of my tongue, but I don't really understand it. <laughs> I have it only in my mind. I see that there's something that I can develop, but it's not developed yet. It's just like a small point, small expression of an idea. That's Chochmah. Within that point, all the details of the idea are contained, but I don't see them. I just know that there's such a thing as such an idea. Again, the first spark of an idea. Then comes Bina. Bina means understanding. Understanding means the development of that idea in its widely, strongly, in all the directions and all the deep, deep dimensions you can think of the development of the idea. Let's give an example. The example of a house. If I want to build a house, because I have a dream that I know the house that I like for my family, and I have it in my mind, I know the house that I want. But that's just an image, an idea, an ideal, <laughs> whatever. However, if I go to a constructor and I have to explain to him the kind of house that I want, I go to him and say, I want a house. Okay, tell me, what kind of house? Yeah, I have it in my mind, you know. I see it, I know the height and the house that I want. However, the guy is going to say, look, I don't read minds. I only hear and I write and I construct. That's what I do. So this, this explain to me, define to me, develop the house you want. How many rooms do you want? What's going to be the material of the floor? What's going to be the color of the walls? So many details that are actually contained in the idea of a house. Those details are called Bina, understanding. The idea of the house is called Chochmah, wisdom. However, there's a third part. The third part is called Das. Das means knowing. But the real description of Das is connection. Connection means that I really think about this issue. Not only have the idea, not only I develop the idea, I really think about it. It's part of my life. And I'm going to actually do it why because i have it so strong on me it's part of my being it's part of my thought the whole day i can't stop thinking about this 
I really connect to this idea. Between parentheses, it's interesting to know that when the Torah, when the scriptures talk about the relationship between the first man and the first woman, it says, Adam yoda eschava. And man knew the woman. Okay, we can say, look, the Torah doesn't want to write, you know, those things, doesn't look so nice, so let's just pick a word and say something that resembles, you know what? No, 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 that's not what the Torah is doing. Marriage between the first man and first one was no. What does that mean to know? Connect. There was a connection over there. Besides the physical ideas, there was a connection, a spiritual connection between them. That's what das means. That's what the Torah chooses, that word, to express the connection, exactly, between man and woman. What a marriage actually means. Let's go back to the intellect. What does connection mean? Connection means that I really take this thing seriously and I really want to go to the end of the world to do it. Those are the three intellectual powers of the mind. In God's service, of course, those three ideas have to be, have to, have to be applied to, to knowing God, to understanding God, to thinking about God, the more we really think about him, his greatness, his infinity, etc., etc., the better our emotions are going to be focused towards God.